Good morning, everyone. Uh, really pleased to be here. As Steve Garrett said yesterday, when I started in the industry, uh, everything was manual. We dealt with paper, and big data was actually, you know, how many boxes of data you had to sort of ship around. Uh, um, and today we're here talking about how can we leverage the power of digital data. And it's, it's exciting. There's lots of great things out there. So the Oil and Gas Technology Centre has been uh, mentioned a couple of times already. So what is it? Um, it's part of the UK Scottish Government uh, and the Aberdeen City deal. Uh, we were given 180 million uh, to invest in technology for the benefit of the North Sea. So the Oil and Gas Technology Centre was set up uh, just over a year ago. We celebrated our first year anniversary two weeks ago. Um, and it is there to help unlock the potential of the North Sea, um, to also try and anchor the supply chain in the northeast of Scotland, you know, create some sustainable jobs there, um, and to create a, a culture of innovation uh, that attracts industry and academia alike. <coughs> so we're about trying to inspire, stimulate, and accelerate, uh, and then deliver technology. Uh, we've got funding to invest in projects, uh, field trials, um, concepts that perhaps uh, may be slightly more risky, and a little bit of funding helps move them forward. Uh, we like we are set up to prove technology, get it ready for market. <coughs> How do we do that? Um, so we've got four sort of aspects to the centre in, in Aberdeen, in Twin to Queen's Road. If you haven't been there and you get a chance, please come and visit. Um, <coughs> one of them is uh, the Innovation Hub. So we have a, a, a space uh, where we host events that helps inspire and stimulate uh, thinking around technology and how it can be used. And so we're regularly hosting events on a weekly basis there on various topics. Um, it has a lot of technology in it as well to help facilitate those conversations. Uh, it was refreshed and, and revamped in, in quite an innovative style and, and opened fresh in October. And we kicked it off with a, a week on robotics. So uh, just to give you one example, uh, that event, we brought in industry leaders, we brought in academic leaders, we brought in people from other industries that are using robots, and we held a conversation to see um, how robots could or how they needed to be developed to work offshore. We helped educate the, the robotic industry and what an offshore environment was like. At the same time, we, we challenged uh, industry to see how they might think about using robots in the future. So that's just one example of the conversations we're trying to, uh, to stimulate. <coughs> The, uh, the second uh, aspect is we've just launched uh, a, a TechX environment. This is an, uh, an accelerator, a technology accelerator function where we will support small startup companies. Um, we're with various cohorts of, of, of training. Um, we've had a massive application uh, to, for the first cohort, and we're in the process of, of deciding which you know, first to 10 or 20 companies go through that. Um, so that's making sure that uh, small companies that start up with great ideas, that they can be sustainable and have a future. <coughs> the other area we're working on is setting up centres of excellence, uh, and mainly probably we're starting, well, we are starting in the area of decommissioning, um, where we will create centres of excellence between academic experts, industry experts, uh, to create um, an area of excellence that can be sustainable, um, <coughs> obviously used for the benefit of the North Sea, but then that that excellence um, cowdery can be exported uh, overseas as well. <coughs> Fourth area is, is uh, the solution centers, which is really where the project investment happens and uh, we, we deliver technology. So uh, there are five solution centers um, that are focused on the MER UK objectives. Uh, there was one on asset integrity. Uh, there's one on reducing the cost of wells. Uh, there's one on the small pools that Nick mentioned, uh, 350 sub-economic discoveries, how can we leverage technology to make some of them viable. Uh, there's one on decommissioning. Again, Nick mentioned uh, you know, decommissioning is upon this basin, and uh, we're grappling with how to reduce the cost and the burden of that, and technology can play a part. The TLB helped shape the OGTC, and Steve uh, Garrett, who's talked yesterday, uh, sits on that. And um, they very insightfully looked at, at other industries and said, well, Yes, they're clearly the priorities for, for the North Sea, but there's a lot of stuff going on in digital. It's transformed other industries. 
you can't have a technology center without a digital aspect. So the fifth center was uh, set up was digital. Um, we've labeled that digital transformation because we believe that uh, that's what it's about, it's about transforming the way we can do work in our industry. So as I said, the center has been going for just over a year and there's been a strong track record so far. <clears throat> We've actually invested 37 million of our 180 million available. So we're, we're ahead of the curve on our investment profile. Um, we have um, run 10 field trials, mainly uh, last summer when the shutdown periods of platforms. So operators have cooperated and provided access to facilities to test. Uh, technologies such as uh, new sensors for detecting corrosion under insulation, um, some drilling uh, technologies, etc. So that's been exciting, the ability to actually get things tested and proved and brought ready for market. And we currently have 70 live projects running. And I had a quick look at the list, and, and of those 70, um, about 10 of them have got some flavor of analytics I in them. Um, and I think there's a lot more to, to come. We're a membership organization, so we encourage people to join and become members. You get access to more information about the projects. We're not looking for more money. We're looking for in-kind contribution from our members. So they, they own their membership by uh, giving us uh, their time and effort, maybe access to facilities, uh, equipment, or, or data. We recognize all those as in-kind contributions. Um, we have reviewed over 400 uh, you know, technologies, and I think... Uh, We've seen over 2,000 companies in that one year. Um, and then uh, another way we stimulate ideas is to put out call for ideas where we have a topic like plug and abandon your wells. We put that out to industry and we say, you know, give us ideas that you want to see us invest in. And we've had over 200 ideas through that mechanism. I think we've issued about, uh, seven calls so far. So a great strong track record and it's uh, well recognized that this has <coughs> been a success so far. We invest in a range of uh, technologies, uh, anything that can be uh, seen as for the benefit of the uh, UKCS and, uh, and can help with the MoUK objectives. We've got sort of three horizons, uh, things that can help fix today's problems, things that can enable those MoUK objectives, and then things that will transform the way we do things tomorrow. On this chart, I've sort of drawn a, a sort of a curve to try and pick out through some of the data aspects we're investing in. You know, there's big data there, there's artificial intelligence, there's data-driven uh, approaches. Um, and on the right-hand side, you'll see the green arrow. And what we're trying to do there is invest in technologies which will move us up the curve from just purely monitoring what's going on today to actually understanding why it's happening, predicting what might happen next, uh, and ultimately and maybe uh, allowing some of the processes to become autonomous. So we see that progression, and we're interested in investing in moving technologies that progress us through that curve. So digital transformation is a very general topic. What does it mean? Uh, we have uh, uh, come up with six sub-themes to try and give it some focus. There's an underlying uh, data and digital architecture theme uh, that's all about uh, enabling secure availability to information. Uh, we are very keen to see that information is more available, and it's a theme that OGA uh, and Nick talked about this morning. <coughs> I'll start from the right. Um, digitally enabled supply chain, you look at other industries, and their supply chains are completely driven by digital technologies, and oil and gas, I think, is a, a long way behind. There's a lot of opportunities for us to leverage digital technologies from track and trace to uh, you know, blockchain type technologies to actually pay for equipment once it's delivered, et cetera. So we had an event uh, last week about that particular topic in our hub where we started to stimulate that conversation. Digitally enabled worker, so how can you augment the skills of an offshore or an onshore worker and giving them extra tools uh, for data input, for inspection, um, maybe making some of their tasks uh, easier and giving them more insights as they're going about their, their jobs. Smart facilities, so we have smart homes, smart cities, smart airports, smart everything. What, what's the smart facility in oil and gas look like, particularly subsea where you can't put humans on there? How can we leverage uh, the Industrial Revolution 4.0 into our facilities? Um, big challenge there for our industry is the retrofit. We've got a lot of aging infrastructure. How do you actually retrofit some of that technology at an appropriate cost. So uh, our, one of our next events is going to be focusing on that topic. 
Most of those themes are above ground. I think there was a discussion yesterday about the above ground stuff and below ground stuff, so that's above ground. Uh, it's typically about becoming more efficient, taking costs out of the system, doing things that, that uh, we do uh, more efficiently. The last two themes are about optimizing production, so we're getting now below ground. How do you optimize production from the reservoir through the well into the facilities uh, to the point of sale? Um, and using uh, monitoring and optimization technologies to, to facilitate that. Um, I think the, 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 the um, smart facilities, the digital enabled work is all about increasing the uptime of our facilities. Production optimization is all about how do you then optimize the throughput of fluids in, those, in that system. And then on the left, the artificially intelligent subsurface team. Um, so this is what I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, and it's about how do you give a subsurface team, whether they're in exploration or in production, uh, extra tools to augment their capabilities. They're all struggling with digesting a variety of data, integrating it, interpreting it, um, and I think today's digital analytic technologies can help them with that. So we approached the exploration task force that Nick chairs uh, with our thoughts on this, and they nominated a group of experts that we could work with, and we held a workshop last year where we looked at this exploration life cycle. Nick talked about it, 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 we need to try and reduce that exploration life cycle as decommissioning is on the basin. Uh, how the time for remaining time for exploration is limited. Um, we want to try and reduce that. So we had a workshop and brainstormed uh, a, a number of opportunities. These are the technology opportunities that came out of it. Um, and again, there's a lot of opportunities um, all the way through uh, that life cycle from surveying through to well planning. Some of them have been mentioned, digital uh, um, uh, assistants uh, turn up on here as well. I think that's been mentioned in a couple of talks. Some of these opportunities are about helping the teams be more efficient in digesting and, in, and, and manipulating the data. And some of these technologies might help them find more barrels, uh, reduce the risk of, uh, or increase the chance of success of, of drilling. We looked at the list and thought, well, where should we make a start? Um, and we decided to pick on the machine learning uh, to try and find more, more leads and prospects. It's quite interesting. Uh, a lot of uh, progress often happens when two conversations intersect. And I think in, there was an area plan discussion in the Northern North Sea that the OGA were having uh, where they're going to have to grapple with some decommissioning uh, decisions uh, you know, very soon. And they think, yeah, but it would be really good to understand what's the remaining potential uh, of this area before we start to decommission some key infrastructure. Uh, so there was that conversation going on, and we, we came back to the exploration task force with, with this proposal of doing something with machine learning. And they said, well, how about let's start with the Northern North Sea. Let's put all the data uh, that's available in, and, and start to analyze it. So, as Nick said, uh, we've kicked off a study in the Northern North Sea where we've been working closely with OGA, CDA, and, and Dan, who talked later, and the Norwegian Petroleum Directorate to make available uh, all the wells in that area, so some 7,000 uh, wells. Uh, geology is no respecter of international boundaries, so I'm really pleased that we're working ac across the, uh, the international uh, boundary there. Um, we put out a call for proposals on this idea um, because it was difficult to pick a winner. We, we could have sat there and, and looked at the companies that we've uh, come through our doors, or we could have tried to go out and find companies. It, it's a bit of a random process, so we decided to put out a call and see what we got back. The previous calls we've put out, typically we get about 30 to 35 ideas. We had uh, 71 uh, responses to this particular call, um, which was very encouraging. There's a lot of appetite uh, to do something here. So um, of those 71 ideas, there was a, a, you know, a few duplications, so it came down to 68 actually individual ideas. Um, 17 of those have come from academic institutions, uh, 51 from commercial organizations. There are two aspects to the call. Um, the data uh, is well organized, but it's of uh, various vintages and very, therefore various quality, um, and it's also in various formats. So the first challenge is actually, and then someone talked about this yesterday, actually taking your data and actually setting it up for analytics, so data conditioning. So the theme, first theme of the call was, you know, can you help condition this data ready for analytics to be run? The second theme was then actually then running sophisticated analytics, particularly machine learning on, on the data. So when I look at the proposals that have been submitted, um, 
Some companies are expert in one or two of those themes and others can do both. So we've had about 23 proposals that are just focusing on the conditioning aspect, uh, 28 on the analytics and uh, 17 proposals that the, the organizations believe they can do both of those things. So that's a great mix. Um, we have uh, created an expert panel. So the way we run the calls is we get the ideas in, we have experts then assess those ideas, rank them um, and shortlist them. We will aim to invest in probably the top five to six of those projects. So we put a million pounds up here. Um, if, they're, if they're good ideas, uh, we may choose to invest more. Um, there are other organizations where we may uh, ask them to put in some funding. Because I think my first reading of all these proposals, some great ideas there. And I think we will want to invest in, in a basket of approaches. Um, what's interesting is not everyone's been uh, suggesting a machine learning. There's been a, a variety of uh, proposals in terms of the analytics. It might be good to invest in, in a basket of those so we can actually get a handle um, on, on which techniques work and, and for the uncertainty of, of the answer. There's not going to be an exact <coughs> answer here. So we've been really encouraged by the response here. We're in the middle of the evaluation process. Um, and there's been a variety of timescales pr um, proposed. Some companies believe they can crack this in, in about you know, two months, and others think it's going to take a, a year to go through the data and really pull out uh, information. So again, we'll invest in a range of timescales. So I'm hoping that in future conferences, uh, in about six months to a year's time, we can start to publish the results of, of, of this work. Um, my summary of, of just what I've seen from the responses is we've, we've had considerable interest in the fact that we're making data available. So we've, we've, as Nick said, there's a trend to try and make more data available. So this is making 7,000 wells available, a lot of in interest. Um, the interest has come from not only uh, UK companies, but also overseas companies. I think we've had uh, proposals from about six overseas companies. Uh, and various sizes of organizations have applied from, from four-man companies to huge you know, international companies. So we've got a range of interest. Um, and as I've mentioned, there are various timescales being proposed. The OGTC has been set up to encourage uh, the development and adoption of technology. So uh, we, one of the things we insist on any project we invest in is that we will publish the results uh, to industry in some form. Um, and so the intent is uh, of this work is that the results will be published uh, and we look forward to being able to do that at future opportunities. So uh, that's the, the end of my talk there, so thank you. Um, just one thing to say, this is a call about this particular project. If at any time you have an idea, your organization wants to try something, uh, you've got someone that's willing to, to, to test it, please come and approach us. We are investing in projects all, all the time, so don't hesitate to, to make contact. Thank you very much.